Welcome to this uh, lecture uh, about laser beam induced current mapping of solar cells, or LBIC for short. My name is Mikkel Jørgensen and I come from the SOL group at the Department of Energy Conversion and Storage at the Technical University of Denmark. Here's an outline of uh, what I'm going to talk about today. I'll introduce uh, the LBIC technique, how the standard type of uh, instruments works and uh, about some of the measurements that we can do with this type of instrument. Then I'll talk about the improvements uh, that we have made to the technique and some of the other uh, measurement types that have become available. The first major thing that we have done is that we have uh, increased the speed of the uh, instrument uh, dramatically. There are some as I said, some other types of measurements uh, that we can do uh, with the LBIC instruments, and I'll come into them a little. Uh, something about tandem solar cells, for instance. Uh, we have developed a contactless uh, technique for, for LBIC. Normally, you would use direct electrical contacts with uh, alligator clips, but we have um, made a contactless uh, instrument also. And this uh, has enabled us, together with the increase in, in speed, to build a roll-to-roll -roll LPIC. And this is very useful for uh, organic solar cells, for instance, which are produced on foil, on rolls of foil, where we can uh, use this technique to monitor uh, the production of the solar cells. Uh, and uh, I will also come into some of the problems that are associated with LPIC measurements of solar modules in, um, uh, uh, in, in regards to, to uh, single cells. And finally, I'll round off with a fun little section on a do-it-yourself LPIC um, that people can do at home. Uh, and even though it doesn't require extensive um, units to measure this, uh, it can still give uh, interesting information about solar cells. So a standard LPIC instrument is um, usually set up uh, in some manner like this one here, where we have an XY stage. In this case, it moves the solar cell around, so we know uh, the exact position of it. And at the same time, we shine a laser onto the solar cell and record the current that we get out of the solar cell at the different positions. And we then use a computer to generate some sort of image or map uh, of the current at the various positions that you see in the images on the right here. Um, and we use this information, this image that we get out of it to see, for instance, uh, defects, areas of the solar cell that do not work as well as we expect. For instance, here we have a silicon solar cell. We have the uh, visual image on the left, and you see a grayscale uh, LPIC image on the right. And you can clearly see uh, a large defect um, where it doesn't work in the upper uh, right-hand corner of the solar cell. So we can see defects, also smaller defects, for instance, um, crystal uh, boundaries uh, in silicon solar cells or uh, other types of point defects, uh, etc., that change or decrease the efficiency of the solar cell. So it can be used to monitor the production process uh, of solar cells. So the principle, if we look a little more closely at it, is that we have this laser that shines on the solar cell and at the same time we record the current and we do normally do this through a source measure unit so we keep the uh, voltage at zero and measure the uh, maximum current that we can get out of the solar cell at each point and what we get out of this is a current table uh, a table of current values for each position that we have held the laser on the solar cell. We then use the computer to um, make a false color 
image from the current table and that looks that uh, shows us where the solar cell works for instance with a intense color where it works well and a darker co color where it doesn't work as well but this is a very slow technique usually i mean if you have say an area of 10 by 10 uh, centimeters and you want to um, look at this with a 100 uh, micron resolution then you get about 1 million points and it takes about 20 milliseconds to reposition uh, the solar cell or the laser if, uh, with the XY um, stage and uh, we also have to make the electrical measurement. This takes about 20 milliseconds for each pixel. So a million points that gives us 5.5 hours of recording time. So it has have relatively uh, little use. I looked up uh, a search in the um, web of science and looked for the search term Elpic and I only got 412 references. You can call this technique by some other names so perhaps the number of total number of references are larger but it is in in that order. So it has been uh, used to characterize solar cells but in the scientific community um, it is not used so much because it is such a slow technique. And we have uh, done a lot of improvements to this uh, technique and one of the major ones is to increase the speed. And we have done this in two ways. First of all we use a movable mirror, a mirror that can rotate uh, around two axes uh, and we then shine the laser onto that mirror uh, and the laser spot is then very quickly moved um, in a raster pattern uh, on the solar cell. So this is one part of the uh, speed increase. The other one is that instead of measuring the current with a source measure unit, we measure the voltage with an oscilloscope. Um, so this is again much faster. So we have increased the speed uh, for this 10 by 10 centimeter area from the 5.5 hours to only a few seconds or minutes. So a speed increase of about 5,000. Um, we can use the technique for various uh, different uh, imaging uh, operations and we can for instance look at electrical shorts and here I have given an example um, of an organic solar cell module with eight uh, solar individual solar cells that are serially connected and we look at it with two different techniques. First of all our Elpic uh, technique and also a dark login thermography uh, for reference. And you can immediately see that in the Elpic image we can only see uh, five of uh, the eight individual cells clearly and that is because something has happened to the last three and we uh, suspect that this is due to um, dramatic electrical shorts within these solar cells. And in the dark login thermography image, uh, which is a technique where you uh, send current through the uh, solar cell instead, you can see that certain areas heat up, uh, especially in the three uh, solar cells that seem non-functional in the Elpic image. So you have some dramatic electrical shorts. If you look at uh, a cross section of a solar cell, for instance an organic solar cell, then you have a middle layer which is the active layer and uh, outside layers which are uh, electron uh, or hole transporting layers and uh, outside these we have the electrodes. And defects could for instance be uh, small metal particles that were embedded in the solar cell and the extreme example is um, a metal particle that spans the whole solar cell so connect uh, the outer electrodes and that is what has happened in these three um, deficient individual cells. You can also have smaller particles for instance um, they usually give rise to uh, less functional areas as you can see in the uh, 
blown up Elbig image on the lower left, where you have smaller uh, dark spots in the Elbig that indicates that here we have impurities that cause this. We can also use the Elbig technique to show um, how, uh, for instance, organic solar cells are flexible. Here's an extreme example. Uh, we have taken um, one of these solar cells and crumpled it totally and then flattened it out again. And you can see that despite this harsh treatment, it actually still works. There are some areas that uh, have been destroyed, but overall uh, the solar cell still works. This would certainly not be the case for um, an inorganic solar cell like silicon solar cells. Another possibility is to look at tandem solar cells. For instance, an Elbig can uh, have two different um, laser wavelengths built into it. So if we have a tandem solar cell which consists of two solar cells stacked on top of each other, where one uh, active layer takes out uh, the energy in one part of the solar spectrum and uh, the other cell uh, another part of the spectrum. We can then look at how the uh, individual subcells uh, work and if there are defects in any of those. Uh, a very different type of measurement uh, that we have also looked at is um, making what is what we call capacitance mapping. If you imagine that in each pixel of the uh, solar cell we pulse the laser light, then if we, um, if you look at the diagram on the uh, left, you can see that when we turn on the laser, um, the signal from the solar cell increases at a certain rate, and when we turn off the laser, it uh, disappears also again at a certain rate. And this rate of increase or decrease uh, corresponds to a certain capacitance value at that point. If you look at a solar cell, it has these two metal electrodes, outer metal electrodes, and in between you have some layers that act as a dielectric. And sometimes you have defects that change the dielectric uh, constant of this layer. And we have tried to image this, and you can see the visible image. You can see a small spot in the um, solar cell. It is hardly visible in the standard Elbig uh, image, but in the capacitance map it stands out. The idea of uh, uh, capacitance um, led us to, to uh, think about other ways of uh, contacting to the solar cell. Um, and we have experimented with what we call contactless Elbig using capacitive coupling. So if you look at, for instance, a solar cell module, as I've shown here, um, they have some outer electrodes. And if we then put um, metal plates around these, we form some outer capacitors and we can transmit the uh, electrical signal that is generated inside the solar cell to the uh, outside uh, uh, recording instrument without using uh, direct electrical contacts. Of course this only works when the current or voltage is changing. Uh, capacitors only transmit uh, alternating current. And um, if we look at at the different types of images we get here. First we have the photo of a single cell that we want to image. We have the normal Elbig image uh, in the middle here, where you see some uh, larger and smaller defects in the solar cell clearly. Then you have uh, the contactless Elbig image uh, in the bottom. It looks uh, a little different, but you see overall the same features. And the reason for the the change in appearance in this uh, contactless mode is that if we look at how the signal is generated as we pass over the solar cell in the standard Elbig mode, when we reach the, the laser spot reaches the solar cell, we have an increase in the signal. And as long as we are over the solar cell, 
it stays high and then it drops uh, to a low value when we are outside the solar cell uh, again. In the contactless uh, method, however, we see a sharp increase in the signal immediately passing into the cell, but then when the uh, current output or voltage output of the solar cell is constant, we see no signal. And then again, when we pay, uh, get out of the solar cell, we uh, also see a signal. So we only see changes in the current or voltage in this mode, but it still records both um, the solar cell and defects in it. And um, of course, this contactless mode together with the speed has uh, made it possible to do what we call roll-to-roll -roll LBIC. Um, this is a technique where you have solar cells, for instance, printed solar cells on uh, a plastic roll, and then you can roll it through the, the instrument as shown here uh, and record the, the LBIC. And this is very suitable for um, characterizing the manufacturing process of uh, plastic solar cells. You see here an example where we have a 13 meter stretch of uh, solar cells that we have imaged with this contactless mode roll to roll LPIC. Um, we can see some of the larger defects at least or uh, parts of solar cells that do, do not work. I'll round off this section uh, with some problems that uh, you can have with solar cell modules as opposed to single uh, solar cells. If the individual cells in a module are connected serially, then the cells that are not uh, lit by the laser will act as blocking diodes and decrease the, the overall signal. And you can see this in the uh, top uh, right image where some of the cells seem to have a, a less intense signal than you would suppose if they were equal. And one way around this uh, is to use uh, bias elimination. You can use a general light source inside the instrument in addition to the laser. Then uh, this background illumination will open all uh, the solar cells all the diodes of the solar cells, and you will get a reasonable image out of that. Another way of around it is to use what is called bias voltage. You um, um, put a voltage across the whole module, and then you extract all the carriers that are formed. Finally, uh, there's a fun little experiment that uh, one can do, uh, do it yourself, Elpic. Um, and this is a very primitive form uh, of LBIC that could be, be used by almost everybody who has access to a uh, computer and um, a voltmeter or um, current meter. So what we did was that we wrote a program where we moved a small white rectangular spot around the uh, screen with a black uh, background and then we put the solar cell facing downwards on the computer screen. And then we recorded the current that was generated at each location um, with this white, white spot. And then we um, created a grid structure in a paint program and colored each um, grid cell according to the uh, current values that we recorded. Uh, this is, of course, much more coarse than the uh, LBIC instruments that you have seen uh, until now, but it does give reasonable images. For instance, here we compare a standard LBIC image of uh, a 8-cell module with uh, this uh, do-it-yourself LBIC. You can see that the do-it-yourself LBIC is considerably blurred to the, um, the uh, standard version here, but uh, nevertheless, you can see the outline of each individual cell and you see uh, that they have intensities that correspond with a normal LPIC image. The quality of the 
do-it-yourself Elbig image, of course, depends on how large this white rectangle that you form and how uh, long time that you, you uh, measure. And here we have shown that if you do very small spot sizes, you can get uh, a much clearer or much finer uh, image, whereas if you have uh, larger spots, um, you of course get a coarser image. But there is uh, also the effect that if you have a very small spot on your screen, then the current uh, measured will be very small and you'll have some uncertainty there. So there is a, a balance, an optimum uh, spot size that you have to use. And uh, at last, I will thank you for your attention and acknowledge the financial support that we have got and uh, the work that has been done in the Sol Group at the DTU Energy. And I'll say that some of the instruments that we have used are available at Infinity APS. Thank you.